Okay, hello everyone. My name is Talama Harry. I am the director for the Smart HQ Service Program at uh, GE Appliances. So uh, as you can see, I'm, uh, I'm working from my home here. Uh, so we're gonna be, the way we're gonna conduct this is we're going to um, do some of the session from the lab, some of the session, um, I'm gonna demo uh, a washer uh, here in my home. And then uh, I'm also gonna have a presentation uh, that I'm gonna be going through some slides, uh, just kind of uh, giving some, some overview and some background about Smart HQ service. Okay, so uh, let me just switch over to the lab very quickly so that uh, uh, Anitha and Adam, who are gonna be helping, can uh, introduce themselves. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, we are in Louisville, uh, Kentucky, uh, and we are in Appliance Park. Uh, my name is Anita Sudalai Kannu, uh, the Software Quality Assurance Engineer for uh, Smart HP Service. Thank you for joining us. Hi, everyone. I'm Adam McCoy. I'm a QA test engineer, and I will operate the camera today. Great, great. Thank you, guys. Uh, so, as I said before, uh, Adam and Anita are going to be uh, helping with the demonstration. Actually, they're going to be doing most of the demonstration um, uh, out of the lab uh, in Louisville. And I am going to be, uh, to be uh, conducting the presentation. So this is the setup uh, that we're going to have in the lab. Um, on the right-hand side is the user interface uh, of the app. On the left-hand side is a partially disassembled uh, refrigerator. So as we go along uh, with the uh, uh, presentation, uh, we're going to be making use of, of this setup. Then we're going to do a deep dive into uh, some of the what we call the uh, real-time diagnostic features of Smart HQ service as relates to refrigerators, the ice maker in a, in a refrigerator, washers, and dryers, okay? Uh, let me just give you a quick uh, uh, understanding of the difference between operate loads and diagnostic tests. So diagnostic tests are where you test a subsystem. So for example, in a washer, you can run a spin cycle. Uh, you can run agitate. Um, on a refrigerator, you can run a cool si uh, cooling uh, system test. So where you test the entire cooling system, the condenser, the, eva um, the evaporator, the um, uh, um, uh, the compressor. Um, so, so that's the difference. Between. Operate loads is where you control a specific component. So, for example, I turn on the fresh food fan. I turn on the evaporator fan. Um, sorry, the uh, freezer evaporator fan. Um, so, or I turn on uh, any you know a heater uh, within the refrigerator. So any uh, situation where you want to control a specific component um, is you go to operate loads to do that. Okay. So, um, so just to, you know, tell you just at a high level, our mission at Smart HQ Service is to essentially aggregate many of the very powerful diagnostic tools that have been developed over the years for GE factory service, aggregate them and make them available to you through this very easy to use uh, mobile portal that runs on Android or iOS phones and tablets. Today, our focus is going to be on operate loads and diagnostic tests. These are the, the features that require you to actually communicate with the appliance, probe the appliance for uh, information or to command the appliance into a state that you need it to be in to be able to uh, and troubleshoot the appliance in the way that you need to, okay? Okay, so um, so we sometimes call Smart HQ Service the universal mobile GE appliance service utility. So, you know, what does that mean? So it's this is a one-stop shop for everything you need to be able to service GE product, okay? Um, our goal is that you don't need to go anywhere else um, in this app, you have access to all the, the uh, information, all the tools that you need to be able to service GE product. Uh, this 
system was based on a PC application, so an e, uh, uh, application that ran on laptops that were used by GE factory service technicians. Um, we have uh, ported this system to run on mobile devices, Android and iOS phones or tablets. Okay. Um, the original name of the system was actually Field Inspector. Um, and then we created uh, a new solution that we called New Field Inspector. Uh, these were all only uh, uh, utilized by GE Factory Service. Then uh, a few years ago, a couple of years ago, we created something called New Fee Mobile, which uh, is a mo was a mobile solution that ran on mobile devices as opposed to PCs. And we made that avail available to our customer care network. So all the authorized services out there that do uh, service work, in warranty service work for GE on GE appliances. Okay. Uh, we've recently renamed the system Smart HQ Service. Okay. So it's now called Smart HQ Service. It's identical to the uh, Newfi mobile system that we uh, have been distributed. So it's the same um, valuable app, uh, different name. Okay. Um, it is designed to be used by um, our customer care network or independent services, so non-GE factory service technicians. That was what this was designed for. Um, and, uh, and so we're glad that uh, you are getting a chance to use it. Uh, we have somewhere around 2,000 uh, of you out there use, using the system. So that's not including the GE factory service. There's somewhere around 1,000 GE factory service technicians uh, using a, a similar system. Uh, but um, so there's uh, somewhere around 2,000 uh, members of our customer care network who are subscribers to this system. OK, so uh, so at the high level um, at the center of the of the of the system is this Bluetooth module that is essentially a Bluetooth transceiver. That, so allows the appliance to communicate wirelessly with a mobile uh, application that runs on, as I said before, phones and tablets, uh, uh, Apple phones and, and, uh, and tablets or Android phones and tablets. Um, so the app extracts information wirelessly from the, uh, this Bluetooth module that's plugged into an Ethernet port on this GE appliance. We have been building this capability into GE appliances since approximately 2011. It started with refrigerators and has gradually spread into uh, all, pretty much all the product lines. So uh, today you will see this capability in washers, dryers, dishwashers, ranges, wall ovens, uh, of course, refrigerators, um, zone line air conditioners, uh, ductless air conditioners. So it is, it is uh, uh, pretty much ubiquitous uh, within GE uh, appliances. So if you think in the old days, before Smart HQ service, you uh, run into a refrigerator like you see on the right here. This unit has six or seven uh, circuit boards, six or seven motherboards uh, running in it, right? Um, these boards are all communicating with each other, doing different things. Um, it's very hard to really understand how this system operates, how to uh, resolve problems with a system like this. So that's why Smart HQ service gives you a way to communicate with the appliance, to interrogate the appliance, to probe the appliance for information, to put the appliance in the state that you need it to be in to be able to resolve issues. OK. You know, you don't, you know, no, you no longer have to beat your head against this, you know, black box where you don't know what is going on in the appliance. Now you know. Now you can talk to the appliance. Okay. So not only do you have this capability, what we call, you know, this um, real time diagnostics capability, but you also have uh, access to all kinds of documents and all kinds of cloud oriented features, right? So, uh, service manuals, mini manuals, um, uh, use and care manuals, uh, installation diagrams, um, wiring diagrams, mini manuals, all kinds of documents uh, you have access to. Uh, 
uh, exploded drawings, interactive exploded drawings. Um, you also actually even have the ability to buy parts through this system. So not only can you resolve issues, um, so re you know, uh, identify or troubleshoot the appliance and identify issues, but you can actually order the parts that you need to be able to fix the problem right there and then. So as I said, a one-stop shop for everything you need to be able to successfully service GE product. Okay, so, so very quickly, uh, so this is the, obviously the Bluetooth module. Uh, it's kind of at the center of the story here. Um, you'll see that on the top side of the, of the module, uh, there are three LEDs that give you status information about what's going on with the module. So what you, the situation that you, 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 you always want to kind of arrive at is that the green LED is flashing and the red and blue LEDs are solid. Okay. This means that the, uh, the Bluetooth module is paired and connected to your phone and communication is, is, is occurring. Okay. If the blue and the green LED are flashing and the red LED is solid, it means the system is paired, but you don't have communication. Okay. Um, you're not connected. You're, you're not communicating. So there's a, a, an additional step, uh, that you might need to go to. You will need to go to to get it to actually communicate. Um, and then, uh, if you ever see the red LED flashing, it means that you have an error. Usually you can resolve these errors by just unplugging the module and plugging it, uh, back in. Um, there is no, uh, battery in this module. Okay. Um, it is powered by the appliance when you plug it in, uh, through the, uh, with the RJ45, uh, uh, cord. Uh, so usually that's going to be the way that you use the system. You just plug it into the appliance. The appliance uh, powers the module, and the module is able to communicate. Okay. Um, you can also power the module if you're not anywhere around the GE appliance. You can power the module by plugging, uh, by powering it through the USB uh, input, USB power input. And um, you can utilize it in this way to transfer firmware update binaries. So the, the software that you use to update the uh, appliances out in the field, to update the software and appliances in the field, you can synchronize those binaries to this module from the cloud so that you're, uh, you're certain that this module has the most recent uh, software to allow you to update uh, appliances out in the field with, with uh, new uh, firmware binaries. And then um, also, if you want to uh, update the software on the module itself. Um, this, you know, this, this Bluetooth module uh, also runs software. You can do it uh, um, that way as well uh, through, uh, through uh, downloading software from the cloud. And then um, we, uh, on the label on the Bluetooth module, uh, there is uh, what we call a MAC ID. Okay, uh, M A C I uh, ID, and um, that the last four digits of that MAC ID are the identifier for this Bluetooth module. So in the app itself um, or in the uh, Bluetooth settings on your mobile phone, you'll see a signal that says GE service, and then it has four numbers. That Those four numbers correlate to this Mac, the last four digits of this MAC ID. So if you have multiple technicians, for example, in a room, trying to get up and running, um, it's very easy to accidentally connect to the wrong Bluetooth module. So the way to identify the Bluetooth module that you should be connecting to or that you are connecting to is to look at the label, look at the last four digits of the MAC ID on the label, and then make sure that that matches the um, the last four digits uh, on the GE, uh, apply, um, the, uh, the GE service uh, signal that you see in the Bluetooth settings on your mobile device. Okay. Okay. So, so now I'm going to get into, uh, the kind of the meat of the discussion here. Uh, and we'll, we'll start the training, uh, for, uh, operate loads and diagnostic tests for refrigerators. Okay. So operate loads, um, very simple, right? So, uh, simply you, you press a button. So in this particular case, I press the, 
uh, uh, ice port heater um, and uh, it, the status changes to on and I can see how long uh, I have, how, how long that's been on for, okay? Uh, condenser, condenser fan, I can turn the condenser fan on high, medium, or low speed. We're gonna demo this in a minute for you. Um, and uh, it shows me the speed at which the fan is, is running, okay? Once again, more of the same kind of idea. You can turn on the uh, isolation water valve. We'll also demo this. Uh, you can turn on the dispenser water valve. You can turn on all the components within the appliance, auger motor, uh, duct door. In this particular case, I, I open the duct, to duct door, make sure the duct door is, is, uh, is functional. Uh, and then, so those will operate loads. Now this is um, diagnostic tests. So diagnostic tests, the way they, they, they work is that they will test uh, a, several parts of the system um, or a, a, what I should say, a subsystem of the appliance um, and, they, and it will run through the operation of several components. So in this particular case, uh, I'm running a cooling test. So let's say you wanna know uh, if the uh, machine is cooling, this uh, uh, refrigerator is cooling at the correct rate. Um, you know, I can, in this particular case, uh, I've got both the um, valves. So this is a three-way valve, uh, feeds the, the fresh food and the freezer. In this case, I've got it, uh, both of them closed, but you can open them uh, and you can see how the fresh food side or how the freezer uh, is running. Um, so at the bottom here, it shows you the status of each one of these uh, elements of the system. Uh, and then you can see the temperature when you started the test. So in this case, it's the fresh food evap temperature and the freezer evap temperature when you started the test. And then uh, what is the temperature of those elements now after you've been running the test for some period of time, okay? Uh, same thing with the um, uh, freezer test, right? So you can run a defrost, fresh fruit defrost, freezer defrost, or both. Uh, you can watch the temperatures change. You can watch the temperatures change as the defrost occurs. So obviously in a cooling test, you expect the, the evac uh, temperatures to fall uh, as the, the cooling system ramps up, right? And... Uh, during a defrost, you, you're going to expect the uh, the temperature of the evap uh, uh, thermistor, uh, uh, the evap thermistor and, and the freezer thermistor to rise uh, as the uh, defrost takes place. This is um, so you'll notice that the screens uh, are not red, right? So um, in the previous uh, uh, features that I was showing you. The, the system was in service mode, and that's why the screen was red, okay? In this particular uh, 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 feature set, we are this, this just doesn't allow us to actually modify the behavior or control the behavior of the appliance, but it allows us to view the status of many, many, many different elements of the appliance, okay? So uh, on top left-hand side there, you'll see the, um, the state of the uh, of the appliance, right? Um, sorry, of the ice maker. So is the ice maker making ice? Okay. Uh, and the next the next one is the is the system in defrost. So is the refrigerator currently going through a defrost cycle? Uh, you can look at the temperature. So what is the, the consumer set point temperature? What is the temperature that the appliance is actually regulating to? Um, and then uh, what is the thermistor reading? So that, you know, so you can do that for either the fresh food or the freezer. Uh, is the unit in turbo freeze um, or is it in, in uh, turbo cool? So what is the, you know, what are the settings on this unit? Um, then the current operating modes, this, this gets a little bit more sort of um, uh, uh, complicated uh, it's, this is uh, really reflects the algorithms uh, that are running within the uh, the refrigerator. That's I would say more almost more of an engineering uh, sort of uh, product development uh, functionality. 
Uh, the defrost uh, status, uh, as I mentioned before, um, uh, what is the fresh food state? Is it is it in defrost? Uh, you can see all the defrost parameters. Um, is it an abnormal defrost? Is it a normal defrost? Um, what what is going on with within the the unit? Okay. Uh, as I mentioned before, you can do uh, you can see whether it's doing a turbo cool, or turbo freeze. Uh, in one um, view, you can see um, all the fans are, are what what speed they're running at. Are they on high, medium, or low speed? And then, of course, the compressor system and the cooling system. Okay. Uh, this screen allows you to see uh, on the far left-hand side there. Uh, these are the the load status of the heaters. Um, are the heaters operating correctly? Are they on? Are they off? What duty cycle are they running at? Um, and then the states of certain uh, elements. So what are the door switches, the fresh food door switch, the freezer door switches, um, the, and then uh, the system can also tell you, um, for example, uh, how many times has the door been opened over the life of the product? Uh, so this tells you, gives you an idea of usage, how heavily used the appliance is, has been, uh, how heavily it's been used. Um, State of the duct door. Uh, how many times has this unit uh, dispensed water, dispensed uh, cubed, crushed ice, uh, and et cetera? Okay. So, I mean, it, it, the, the, the way to just understand this is that we give you access to all the information that you could possibly need. Some of it may be more than you need in, in some situations, but um, you will never not have the information you need to be able to uh, adequately service this, uh, the, the, the product. Okay, so now we're going to switch to a demo. So we're going to go to the lab. And uh, so I will switch to this. And uh, so I think the first thing we're going to do uh, is we're going to enter service mode. And we're going to Go to the dispenser functionality and operate loads. Okay, and we're going to show you that we can control the water valves. Um, so turn on the isolation water valve and the dispenser water valve. And you'll see and you'll hear water dispensing, right? So let's turn that off so we don't cause a flood. Let's open the door and just show you some other components. So I'm going to show you auger motor. We're going to show you that you can run it in clockwise um, direction for crushed ice. Make sure the crushed ice is uh, working. Uh, and then counterclockwise for cued ice. Turn that off. So we can turn on the light. We can turn on the off the light. Could have done that for the fresh food, freezer, um, any compartment that has a light you can control. Um, let's turn on. So let's back out of this and let's turn on the uh, the evaporate the evaporate fresh food evaporator fan. So you'll see that. So, so let's turn that off. So think about this situation where you have a consumer that's complaining about noise, okay? And, you know, as these fans get older, sometimes they, there's some resonant frequency at which they start making noise. And uh, that noise will never be happening when you're in the home and when you're talking to the consumer, right, uh, under normal circumstances. So what you can do is you can go through all the fans, put them at different speeds, and uh, have a situation where the, the homeowner can tell you, yes, that's the noise I've been hearing. That's the, 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 the concern I have. And you can focus on that um, part of the system and you can fix that so that you're not guessing as to really what, what is wrong. Okay. So let's go to the uh, freezer uh, evaporator fan. We could uh, turn that on. Okay, turn that off. 
Okay. Uh, mentioned before, we're going to show you. So you see it turned off. Okay. Uh, at the back of the unit, um, we're going to go to the condenser, condenser fan. We've kind of taken that out of the unit so you can see it. So let's turn that on. Okay, we can turn it off. So, you know, just minute, minute control over every element of this refrigerator and any appliance uh, that you uh, might be working with. Okay, so I think that's uh, that's what we wanted to show you uh, in terms of the demo on uh, the refrigerator systems. So I'm going to go back to the presentation. And uh, we'll just keep keep going here, okay? So, okay, so Ice Maker. So very similar story, right? So you can control um, all different components within the Ice Maker, okay? Um, whether it's the mold body heater, whether it's the Ice Maker um, uh, uh, water valve, whether it's the uh, uh, rake motor. So, and then you can watch the status of these uh, sensors that control the ice maker as they change, right? So um, we're actually gonna demo this to you in a minute, but the point is that you have, just like every other component, you have a very, very uh, micro level control over the ice maker and uh, you can, you can really um, test the ice maker, see how it's operating, okay? So um, one of the diagnostic tests is the ice maker diagnostic test. We're gonna, ru we're gonna actually run through this in a minute here, but um, um, this is just a, 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 a test that allows you to force an ice harvest and it will show you all the parameters um, as they change during the harvesting of ice. Okay, so I'm gonna, we're going to go back to the lab, and we are going to run a ice maker harvest. So this might be something you've uh, you've never seen before to actually see the ice maker harvest ice. So let's go into the um, ice maker test. So service mode first. Sorry. Okay, so let's go to the ice maker test. Okay, um, we're gonna set the camera on the ice maker so you can see how the ice maker is behaving. Okay, and you can watch the parameters of the ice maker as they, uh, as they change. Okay, so on the, obviously, um, so let's, let's start the ice maker test. Okay, so the first thing you'll see is the mold body heater and the rake motor will turn on, right? So the mold body heater uh, heats the mold, or the ice maker mold, to free up the ice, right? And then the rake motor sweeps the ice out of the ice mold and will eventually harvest that ice, okay? Uh, and that ice will get dropped into the uh, the ice bucket, okay? Um, so you'll see the temperature of the mold body thermistor rise. Uh, you'll see it rising. Uh, it will eventually reach somewhere around 45 degrees Fahrenheit. When it reaches uh, that temperature, the mold body heater will turn off, okay? Because it would have reached the appropriate temperature. So watch it for a minute here as that, as that temperature rises. You can see, obviously, the mold body heater and the rake motor are on. So the rake is in the process of sweeping that ice out of the mold. And if you look carefully on the left-hand side, in a minute, you will start to see the ice 
uh, being ejected from the mold. So we're at 31 degrees Fahrenheit. Mold body thermistor, I mean, the mold body heater is still on. When, the, when, and you can see the ice, see that perfectly formed ice starting to show in the picture here as it's being harvested. So the, uh, the rake motor will continue to move. Eventually that rake motor will reach home and the rake, po mo the rake position sensor will switch from not home to home. So, one second. So the temperatures continue to rise. And you'll see that the, the ice is about to be harvested. So the ice was just harvested. And that rake motor sensor position should switch to home. And you will see water, the water valve open and water dispensed into the ice maker mold so that the next cycle of ice can begin to be made. There you go. So you saw, you see that water um, entering the mold and now the valves are off. So that was a complete complete ice maker harvest cycle, okay? So um, so that's, uh, um, you know, I don't know uh, how many of you have seen that before, but um, that's, you know, that's, that's uh, pretty neat to be able to watch that whole process. So, um, so let's go back to the presentation. So uh, thank you, Anita. Thank you, Adam. That was, uh, I think that was pretty cool. Um, okay. All right. So, so now we're going to um, talk a little bit about a washer. Okay. So uh, many of the same uh, uh, features exist uh uh, in a washer that exists in all the other appliances that we have talked about. So, um, so you can see here, um, operate loads for a washer. Okay. So we've talked about operate loads for all these, uh, other appliances, the layout, the functionality, the capabilities are pretty much identical as you go across different, uh, appliances. Okay. Uh, just the actual features and what they do are, uh, are different. So, so, uh, obviously you can turn on the cold water valve, you can turn on the hot water valve, you can turn on and it will show you how long the valve's been open. It'll show you the status of the, of the valve. You can turn on the bulk, um, dispense. So that's the, um, the, uh, detergent dispenser. Uh, you can, you can, Test that. Uh, it's just another valve. Uh, fabric so softener valve. Um, you know, you can test the lid lock. 
Um, you can uh, uh, turn on and off the drain pump. Okay. Uh, the mode shifter that uh, switches from uh, spin to agitate. You can control that directly. You can turn that, uh, switch it from from uh, um, agitate to spin and vice versa. Um, and just to make sure that it's working. Uh, this is a, uh, so we were talking about operate loads there. Now we're talking about uh, diagnostic tests. Okay. So um, you can run a spin cycle. And so you start the spin cycle. It will show you what state it's in, what speed the uh, the basket is rotating at, what's the target speed, okay? The, the actual speed is always trying to catch the target speed, okay? You can put the, uh, the appliance in agitate, so you can see the agitate cycle, and once again, you can see the graph uh, as, uh, as the unit um, uh, goes through the uh, the agitate cycle. So now I'm going to switch to uh, a different screen so that you can see the demo. So on the left hand side, you can see the screen of uh, uh, my tablet. Okay, I am in the uh, diagnostic test for, uh, for washers. Okay, and I'm going to enter the uh, I'm going to enter uh, service mode, so the screen will go red. Okay, I am. Uh, I'm actually going to uh, put this in full screen mode so that you can see clearly. I put my my phone that I'm reflecting to my laptop here in full screen mode. Okay, obviously you can see uh, this camera that's trained on a on a washer, and you'll see how. This washer reacts to my inputs from the uh, from the app. So I'm gonna. So there's a bunch of tests I can do here: spin test, agitate cycle test, LED test, which tests the uh, LEDs on the UI, lid lock test. I'm gonna do the uh, low flow test. Okay. So the low flow test. Uh, this is intended to uh, allow you to verify that the water pressure. Um, in the home is adequate, and uh, that the um, the rate at which water is entering the tub uh, is is where it needs to be. Okay, so the first thing you do uh, is you you, you uh, tap on the test prechecks. Okay, and it uh, the screen the, the screen will change a little bit. Okay, so it says here um, I can I can run the drain pump, but I, I don't want to do that. It's already uh, there's no water in the unit. Um, but I'm, I what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the test. Okay. Okay, and you will see. You'll see water entering the unit. Okay. So you will also see a graph. On the user interface of the app. Okay, so what you're seeing here is as water enters the unit, the pressure sensor in the unit is measuring the level of water. And what's going to happen is it's going to keep putting water into the unit until it reaches seven inches of water. When it reaches seven inches of water, depending on how long it took to reach 
that seven inches of water, it will either have passed the test or failed the test. And the system will tell, will tell you. So we're at six, we've now hit seven. So the, 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 the unit will stop. Right, stop putting water into the, into the, the unit. And you can see here, it says pass, right? So, um, so that means that, uh, we have passed the, the test passed. Okay. Apologize, there's something that kind of blocking it, but uh, but the test passed. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to drain the unit. I want to uh, remove the water from the unit. So just up here, I can turn on the drain pump, and you'll see the unit start to drain, and you'll see the water level start to fall. So I'm going to let it go all the way down because um, I'm going to do a spin cycle uh, test um, once I'm done here. And I need the, the unit to be empty. So in a minute, it, it's going to hit zero. And I'm going to stop the test. I'm going to stop the uh, the drain pump. Okay, so I'm going to turn it off. Okay. All right. So, so let me just move this so you can see the full graph. So yeah. So so this is the graph that you see. Okay. All right. So so now. Um, I'm going to do a spin cycle test. Okay. And uh, I just click on the top right hand. Uh, I click on, on the spin action. Once again, you'll see the graph and you'll see the unit start to react to the inputs from the, uh, from the app and the Bluetooth module. So you'll see it spinning. And you can see the graph, the target, the target uh, speed, and the actual speed. So right now the target speed and the actual speed are the same, but the target speed will ramp up in a second here. There you go. So the, the target speed is now at 450, and the actual speed will ramp up to try to keep up. So this is how you can you can look at a unit um, spin, during the spin cycle, and you can. So I'm going to stop this now. But um, but the important thing is you can see um, whether this machine is performing as would be expected, okay? And you can do it all, as I said, at the tips of your fingers, um, you, know, from the, you know, from your mobile app, don't have to disassemble the unit, don't have to wrestle with the unit, just very, very, very uh, simple. Um, I could do it an, an agitate test. Um, I could do uh, other tests. 
I'm not going to do all that because uh, we're, we're going to run out of time. I can do a lid lock test. So a test, uh, obviously, um, this the unit will not go into the spin cycle unless the unit is locked. Um, so you got to, you know, the, the you can sometimes, um, uh, if you're having problems with the spin cycle, it could have to do with the, the lid lock. So uh, being able to test that is useful. Um, and, uh, yeah, so... So that's um, what I wanted to demo um, as far as the washer is concerned. So I'm going to very quickly talk through dishwasher. So very similar capabilities once again, right? Water valves can be controlled, circulation uh, pump, uh, drain pump. You can drain the unit. Um, main cup dispense. We'll demo this in a minute. Um, you can uh, you can trigger the main uh, cup dispense to open. Um, you can uh, so we have uh, diagnostic tests. So this is a fill test. Make sure the tub is filling correctly, uh, similar to the the test we ran uh, on a washer. Uh, shows you you know how long uh, these uh, valves are, are are on for. Um, circulate test. So uh, this test uh, essentially runs through these cycles. So first it'll run the drain uh, for uh, a certain amount of time. Uh, then the water valve, it will fill the unit. Uh, it will run the circulation pump and it will show you the diverted position as it's doing all these uh, activities. Okay. Uh, heater test, very similar to the circulate test, except for it turns on the heater uh, at the end, and um, it shows you the temperature change uh, as the heater heats the uh, heats the, the tub. Okay, so once again, I'm going to switch back to the demo in the lab. Uh, so we're in operate loads. So we're going to go into uh, service mode. Okay, operate loads. First thing we're going to do is we're going to put water into the tub. So we're going to turn on the water valve. And you'll see that. See water entering. So we're going to leave that for about a minute. I would say that the um, on washers, dishwashers, um, refrigerators, uh, that's where you have some of the really, really powerful and, and uh, wall ovens as well. But um but those are some of the really powerful capabilities. Uh, so now let's um, now that we got the tub full, let's run the lower circulation pump. Uh, now our uh, circulation, uh, the lower spray arm, I should say. So we're running the circulation pump. Now the thing to realize is um, because of the diverter, it takes a little time um, for this the unit to actually settle on uh, spinning the lower arm. So first, it's gonna it's gonna spin the lower arm, then the upper arm, then the um, uh, the silverware jets are gonna go for a little while, and then it's gonna go back to spinning the uh, lower spray arm, and it's gonna it's gonna continuously spin uh, the lower spray arm. There you go. Okay. Okay, so so that's that's pretty cool, right? So granular, you know, really powerful control of of the system. So we turn them turn it off. Okay, now uh, just uh, let's drain the unit. So let's um, run the drain pump. You'll see the unit draining. Okay, so now the last thing we want to show you is the that you can control the main cup, the the, the the detergent dispenser. So let's uh, let's activate that. Okay, perfect. Okay, so once again, um, you know, I, I I can't say it too many times, right? Just very very, um, you know, granular level control of the system. Okay. All right. So some people think, okay, well, this only works on high end. You know, product, um, and you know, some of our competitors they have systems that you know not quite. Uh, you know, some people say it's similar, 
But um, but you know the, the the issue there is that it really only works on their really high end product. Um, for GE, it works. It is part of our DNA, right? We put this in everything, uh, in all our, our appliances. So the, when you go out and you work on a GE product, the likelihood that it's going to be compatible with this system is very, very high. Uh, most of our high volume product has this uh, uh, capability. Um, I would say most of our product period has this capability. It's very difficult at GE to uh, present a product development plan that does not have this functionality. And even for the very simple product where um, we have determined that, so for example, so top freezers, microwaves, um, that don't have this capability, you still have access to a very rich set of documents um, that uh, that can be useful in terms of servicing our, our GE product. So, uh, so I think we've uh, reached the end here. So uh, this is our contact information. So many of you are probably watching on the smarthqservice.com website. Um, you can always call us, always reach us at 502-714-2029, 502-714-2029. And you can also reach us um, over email at smarthqservice.support at geappliances.com. We are based in uh, uh, a GE Appliance Park in the beautiful Louisville, Kentucky. We have our website. Uh, lots of very, very useful and very valuable information on the website. Uh, so training videos. Um, so this video will actually, this, this training session will actually be posted on our website. So you'll be able to view it uh, later if you choose to. Um, all our training sessions, all these virtual training sessions um, are uh, uh, saved to our website or posted on our website. Okay. So all the, the older training sessions, uh, the virtual training sessions, have also been posted to our website. Okay. Um, and then, uh, like I said, there's uh, just general training videos. Um, there's these uh, videos that we send out called Smart Snippets that focus on uh, very specific elements of the functionality of the app. So these videos are usually about maybe a minute and a half long, but they focus, they drill in and focus on a very specific uh, feature. And then we have uh, all kinds of other um, videos. Okay. And then uh, you can visit our uh, YouTube page, which has a lot of the same, uh, same videos uh, as our website, maybe even more. Whoops. Excuse me. Didn't mean to do that. Um, and then um, you can also uh, visit our Facebook page uh, where we also have a lot of information, a lot of announcements, um, just a good place to find uh, useful information. OK, so uh, so that's all uh, I had. Um, hopefully. Uh, hopefully you've learned something uh, from this uh, session. And um, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Um, we, uh, we like to do these training sessions um, maybe once every six weeks. We pick a particular topic and, uh, and try to drill down and, and uh, uh, teach you about a specific element of the tool that uh, we think uh, you might be interested in knowing. And, um, and we'll continue to do this and, and uh, we hope uh, that you get value from, uh, from the system. So uh, thank you everyone. Thank you for attending this session. Uh, have, a, have a great afternoon and uh, feel, please feel free to contact us. Feel, please uh, feel free to get in touch with us. Thank you very much. Have a, have a great uh, afternoon. Thank you for attending. All right. Bye-bye.